Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. And this week we're talking about a little movie that just hit Netflix called Veronica, which is a Spanish language film set in Madrid and happened to be directed by one of the co-directors of the Rec series, Paco Plaza. And I sincerely apologize if I completely mispronounced his name, I honestly have no idea how it's supposed to be pronounced. But if there are any Spanish-speaking people out there who want to berate me in the comments section below, then feel free to because I totally deserve it. Anyway, Veronica is a very interesting movie because it's a film that I did not actually hear about until it finally hit Netflix. And then for some reason when it hit Netflix, it felt like my Facebook and Twitter feeds were just non-stop Veronica hype. Just article after article about how this is the scariest movie ever and how people keep having to stop watching it halfway through. Which, my big question is, how do you know if they're stopping it halfway through because it's good or because it's bad? Because that is a very important distinction when you think about it. But on top of that, I noticed that it wasn't any of the big horror publications that were espousing this. It wasn't a site like Bloody Disgusting, for example. It was a whole bunch of random sites I hadn't heard of before. And because of this, I went into this movie really skeptical because I was pretty sure that all that hype was bought and paid for. It didn't feel like legit hype from a bunch of fans who saw the movie and loved it and wanted to spread the word. It felt like a movie producer had bought a whole lot of ad spots on a bunch of websites and then was pushing it everywhere. Now personally, because I can't prove that one way or another, I'm just going to say that the hype was probably real, people probably really enjoyed it. That being said, having finally seen the movie, yeah, it's a pretty good movie, but way overhyped. It's pretty well written, pretty well acted, pretty well directed, and it's got some pretty suspenseful moments. But there was never any point in this movie where I felt like I had to stop watching because I was so on edge. Which is something I can say happened when I first saw the original Wreck. Hell, even to a certain extent, I felt that with Wreck 2. But Veronica? I enjoyed myself, but no, it is not the scariest horror movie of all time. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's the scariest movie of the year so far, but it's definitely a good one. Though I will say, I did predict exactly where this movie was going about 20 minutes in, so it is a pretty predictable movie. Now granted, part of the reason why it's so predictable is because it tells you the end of the movie at the beginning of the movie, which I don't think the movie really needed to do, but okay, I got it, it's supposed to be based on a true story, so we gotta insert this detective for no reason. And truth be told, I have no idea about the legitimacy, about what this is actually based on, but I'm gonna call bullshit having seen it. I don't know, just something tells me whatever happened, it didn't happen the way it happened in this movie. Anyway, let's stop ragging on the movie for a little bit and focus on the things that absolutely worked about this film. The lead actress playing Veronica is phenomenal. You really get invested in her character and she is just like, when this actress cries or is distressed, you internally feel those tears and you yourself get distressed. And on top of that, you care about as much as she does about her siblings, who, without getting into spoilers, are in extreme danger over the course of this film. Paco Plaza's directing in this movie is actually pretty well done. Even though this movie isn't found footage, he uses a lot of the tricks he learned from making found footage movies in this film. For example, there's this whole sequence in which a character is looking for another character at a party, and it's all done as if it's one shot, but it's obvious he was using some of the rec tricks of hiding cuts in between whip pans. But I liked it because shooting that sequence as if it was one shot puts you in the headspace of the main girl, so you feel as stressed as she does when she's running through the party and can't find her friend. And the other thing I really liked about this movie is this film's score. It's actually really unique to this movie. And to be completely honest, it reminded me a lot of the scores for Lucio Fulci films. And y'all know me, I love myself some Lucio Fulci, so I was totally down with that. Gotta get down with the Fabio Frizzy worship, yo. Anyway, the other thing I really liked about this movie is a character that is actually pretty underutilized, and that's this character called Sister Death. Basically, when shit starts happening to Veronica in this movie, she ends up turning to this one sister in this coven. Well, not coven, it's a sister that works at the school that she goes to, because she goes to one of those Catholic schools. But this particular sister is blind, but she can see ghosts and shit. So she can tell right away when something is not right with Veronica. And I suppose by telling you what Sister Death can see, you kind of have an idea of what kind of horror movie this is. This is yet another modern horror film that is hearkening back to 70s style supernatural thrillers. You got some ghostly, possibly demonic happenings, some potential possession. In this particular decade right now, this kind of movie is a dime a dozen, and so anytime you make a movie like this, it needs something to stand out. And I will say this, there is enough in this movie to stand out from all the rest. So I will give it that, it is really good. But man, it's really obvious that I would have liked this movie a whole lot more had it not been so hyped up before I went in and watched it. Which is too bad because that is so not this movie's fault, at least I don't think it is. 
but I can't really change the way I saw it, so hopefully over time I will like this movie more and more the further I get away from that hype. But with all that being said, I do recommend checking out Veronica. It is a solid horror film. Just put your expectations at the door and walk into it just seeing it as a movie, not as the scariest movie ever. And because it's currently available on Netflix, I don't think I can put an Amazon affiliate link for it in the description below, but I will put something. Heck, I'll probably put a link to Wreck or something, because that movie truly is one of the scariest movies of all time. And with that all said, my fellow gorehounds, let us finally move on to the spoilers. Alrighty then, so this is one of the movies that opens up with a prologue that is essentially the end of the movie, and the rest of the movie is slowly building up to that ending. And during this ending, the police get this one distressed call from this one apartment complex. And so we follow this detective as the voice call is being played over it of these kids in distress saying that someone's in the house. And this cop arrives at the scene and sees this mom consoling her scared kids. And then he enters the apartment and it's just in complete disarray. And he picks up this one cross off the ground and puts it on a wall. But then he hears this screaming down this hall and he runs down the hall, enters the room, and then his eyes widen at what he sees. And then we cut to the beginning of the movie. Where we're introduced to our main character, this teenager named Veronica, as she gets all of her younger siblings ready for school. Because her mom is one of those absentee moms because she's working all the time. But what I really like about the beginning of this movie is that that initial sequence in which the police officer arrives at the scene, it's very much shot like it's a dramatic reenactment from like a documentary about this case. And I just thought that was kind of cool. It's Paco Plaza using a lot of the tricks he learned making Wreck and applying it to a non-found footage movie in a way that really works. Anyway, Veronica gets her siblings ready for school, and then we get this brief moment where she looks at this photograph of this one guy, and they never outright say it, but you get the implication that this guy in the photograph is her dead father, and that ever since her father died, it's been really hard on her mother, so she's been trying to pick up the slack. And I love that every piece of that information is conveyed to you visually and not told to you. Because in a lesser movie, all that would have been exposition. So bravo to Paco Plaza and the screenwriters for doing that right. Anyway, Veronica arrives at school, and we're introduced to her best friend, who asks her if she brought the thing. And you're sitting there going, like, what is the thing that she's supposed to have brought? And it turns out the thing that she was supposed to bring, and she did bring, was a Ouija board. Because it turns out this day of school is also a day of an eclipse, and Veronica and her best friend and this other girl want to perform a seance. With Veronica's intention to be to talk to her father, and this third girl that they invite along wants to talk to her dead boyfriend. Because it turns out he died in a motorcycle crash and yada yada yada. She and her story really isn't important to this movie, but I figured I'd tell you anyway. So anyway, the eclipse happens, they perform the seance, but something goes terribly wrong. Because when the seance is taking place, Veronica starts acting weird, and then everyone removes their hand, and the thing starts talking through her. And then the glass they're using to do the Ouija board thing gets really hot and shatters. It pierces Veronica's hand, and then her blood just oozes onto the Ouija board. And then all the lights go out, and the girls freak out and scream. And for a brief moment, it's very clear that Veronica has been possessed. But then she wakes up in the nurse's office and appears to have just fainted. And the nurse is like, oh, you probably just have an iron deficiency, have a hamburger. So she gets out of school, then picks up her siblings, meets with her mother, and then heads back home. But her friend completely avoids her after school. And on top of that, the very next day, she lies about the fact that she's avoiding her. Anyway, long story short, she starts having all these awful nightmares of her father coming to her and calling her Veronica. And then all these black hands trying to choke her in her bed. And these sequences, while legitimately creepy, are not so terrifying that I had to turn the movie off, so that hype was bullshit. And I know I'm still harping on that, but it really bugs me. And so a bunch of creepy stuff happens. She starts looking towards her books of occult to try to find a solution to the problem. And at one point, she puts up all these Viking symbols around her apartment in order to protect her siblings. But the thing that is stalking her now just burns all those symbols and then chokes one of her siblings. And then she goes to try to stop the choking, but then the sibling thinks that she's the one choking him. And based on stuff like that, you probably have a really good idea of where this movie is going. And I'm telling you right now, if you are like me watching this movie, you are 100% correct. There is a thing that is stalking Veronica, but it's not actually stalking her, it is kind of possessing her. And so she is basically a danger to both her siblings and her friends. And the rest of this movie is her trying to figure out a way to fix that. And honestly, I don't really want to go deeper into the plot of this movie because it's basically by the numbers from this point on. But I will tell you about some sequences I really liked from the second half of the movie. I really like the way Paco Plaza handled this entity and the way she sees it. 
because there's some super creepy sequences in which it's like in reflections of TV screens, or it's walking behind the distorted kind of glass you see in like bathrooms. Or my favorite, when it's a shadow on the wall just stalking the kids as they sleep. These sequences are all fantastic, and I loved every second of them. It wasn't so shit your pants scary that I had to stop watching the movie, but they were good. So anyway, like I said in the first half of this review, do not go into this movie with high expectations, just go to see it as is. And I promise you, Veronica is a good movie. It's not the scariest movie of all time, but it is a good one. And it is absolutely worth your time, especially if you're a fan of Paco Plaza and the Wreck movies. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so they're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as per usual, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.